back to the next video in the series where we now take a look at callbacks which is a really useful feature that lightning provides uh, if you have experience in keras they have pretty much the same thing um, so we will look at what they sort of offer out of the box also what we can um, sort of how we can build our own and so on so we will start off with the let's see we'll start off with the previous one, so we'll copy restructuring. That's what we did in the previous one, right? And then we'll uh, do callbacks. We'll change directory to callbacks. Now, uh, we will mostly be using uh, their sort of out of the box callbacks. And we'll take a look at exactly what those are. Uh, but if you're creating your own callbacks and so on, then it's nice to have a separate callbacks function. So we'll create that first of all. And what we will do is, uh, first of all, we'll just do like from PyTorch Lightning dot callbacks. Uh, we're going to import early stopping. So we're going to use that. Uh, oh, that was a mistake. So if we go here to sort of the callbacks that they have, we can see, um, you know, some is batch size finder, checkpoint. Uh, you can do this device stats monitor where you can. Um, basically kind of profile your code and see how much I haven't used this too much but that's basically what it is early stopping I don't know what this is gradient accumulation scheduler you have other cool stuff as well like quantization aware training uh, stochastic weight averaging sort of a, a way an easy way to take an ensemble of your models during checkpointing I believe that's what it is at least uh, so these are not that many callbacks you have here, uh, but uh, they have more as well in a separate library called Bolt that you can check out that has a lot more uh, additional ones. Not sure why it's not included in this one, but uh, yeah. So we'll use, uh, in this one, we'll use early stopping, and then I'll show you if we create our own. So we'll do callback. Now we're just going to do a simple one, my printing callback just to show you the structure of it so we'll inherit from callback uh, we will basically if we go to callback here we can see what we have um, what we have here so we have setup uh, you know depending on the, we have stage here which is fit validate test predict or tune depending on if we want to um, d do different stuff depending on when we run it Teardown is basically when, yeah, when it ends. So if you're loading some data that's only for the tune part or something, you can remove it so it's not in, in, in memory and so on. Uh, on fit start, on fit end. Um, and you have basically sort of, you have access to the trainer and that the trainer also has access to all of the logs. So you can take out the logs for, you know, during uh, that you have accumulated so far and you can do interesting uh, things with it. Um, so, you know, what we can do here is uh, just a, bi a basic one. If we do on train start, we send in the trainer and the PL module. The PL module is basically all the modules that are uh, initialized in our uh, lightning module. So, you know, our in this case, our linear layers and our accuracy metric and so on. Uh, but if we do this, then uh, when we train and when we start training, it will print starting to train. We can do other stuff like uh, on train end. We can do training is done. So this is just a simple, I mean, the most basic one. If we go take a look at early stopping, for example, we can see exactly how it's implemented. And so we have an init function here. And in this case, we are running the super first. Um, right, we can do that as well, right? If we do init self uh, super in it uh, like this and then if we go back to it we can see that uh, let's see how this works actually so it's doing setup mm, I guess it doesn't depend on anything here it's doing check on train epoch and is none mm, right so it can either check on training epoch or I guess on the validation uh, so it's doing some kind of check here to know how often it should uh, should check it, I guess. And then let's see what it's doing. So it's going on on validation end. 
run early stopping check of the trainer. If we go to that, it will get the logs. So it will do trainer.callback metrics. Uh, it will do logs of self.monitor. So you can monitor either the uh, validation loss or you can monitor the uh, accuracy, um, you know, depending on your preference here. And then it runs a evaluate stopping criteria. I guess this is where they've done uh, if it checks, yeah, should stop. And the, here it does the functionality of it. I guess it has like a, a patience as well, or whatever it's called, where, you know, it needs to, the validation loss needs to increase in a, a couple of steps before it actually stops. So I think that's what we send in here, the patience three. Um, but yeah, this is not to understand exactly how they implemented the early stopping. It's more to see the structure of it so that you know, uh, you know, it's going to depend on what you want to do, obviously, but so that you know what you have access to. So this is what it looks like right now. And we can uh, use this so we can go to our trainer. Uh, and here we can do from callbacks, import my printing callback and early stopping. And it's pretty very easy, actually, which is what's nice about it is that you can um, just include it in your trainer. So we can do uh, callbacks and we can uh, just send a list of the ones that we're going to use. So my printing callback, which is just going to print train start train end. Then we can do early stopping, which is going to monitor the val loss. In this case, I don't believe we're actually doing any val accuracy, but uh, if you would compute val accuracy and you log it, you could just change this to val accuracy. Um, but that should be pretty, oh, that should be pretty much it. So if we go now to this, right, and we run it, now we can see here it's running, uh, starting to train here and somewhere it should say training is done here. And that's pretty much it. So I guess let's see if there's anything else here. Uh, yeah, so I mean, to get the early stopping thing, we would need to increase our our um, config here. So we could increase the number of epochs to I don't know, a 1000 uh, and let it run. Oh, and uh, all right, we need to change this as well, right to num epochs here. So if you now rerun it, all right, so now I just set it to config.num epochs is a thousand and we're just running it and hopefully it will stop at some point. Um, so yeah, that'll probably be good enough. So after now 15 epochs, it stopped running because, um, it, you know, we could go and verify it by looking at TensorBoard logging. Um, have we done that yet? Uh, wait, no, okay, we haven't done that yet, so never mind. We can't do that. We'll do that in the next video. Uh, but uh, so we're just going to trust that this works. And uh, basically, uh, one more thing we could also add here is that we're getting these error messages now that, um, let's see, uh, basically it says, you are using CUDA that has tensor, tensor cores to properly use, utilize them. You should set torch.set flow 32. And let's just do to make lightning happy. I guess it's to make the code faster as well. Cool. Now we're just getting all of these things directly and no error messages. All right, nice. So uh, that's it for callbacks. Uh, I know it wasn't that in depth uh, because we didn't, you know, I just showed you the general structure of callbacks and how we can utilize some basic ones. Um, you know, you can get really advanced in this, uh, depending on, depending on the callbacks that you want to implement. Um, I might make a, a future video that's more in depth on callbacks, uh, but really this series right now is just to get you up to speed and, uh, get you familiar with all the areas of lightning. And then you can, uh, go, you know, where you should, uh, go further if you want to do something very specific. So yeah, that's it for this video. In the next one, we will take a look at TensorBoard and logging, which is really important. All right, like the video if you thought it was useful and I hope to see you in the next one.